Uh, this is Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under. I just want to report on something that's just come my way the last couple of days. The uh, Siberian fires are um, raising their head and uh, it's the middle of winter. So uh, first of all, I just want to hark back to May last year. So this was on the 2nd of May last year. Uh, and this dominated everything through the last northern summer. So wildfires critical in Siberia and Russian Far East up to 10 times, I'll repeat that, 10 times worse than last year. And of course they uh, ascribe this to, uh, well, they give the proximate causes, which are <laughs> people flouting coronavirus lockdown and starting fires. That's what the officials said. Um, so uh, yeah, disturbing pictures and videos show the scale of wildflower fires engulfing Siberia and the Russian Far East after the winter snow melt. With the government's focus on coronavirus, President Vladimir Putin um, called for vigilance over the annual challenge uh, from forests and steppe fires worsening due to global warming, climate warming. Emergencies Minister Evgeny Zinichov uh, warned in a video conference from, with the president that a combination of factors now poses a threat to many regions of Russia. A critical situation with fires has developed in Russia, sorry, Siberia and the Far East, he warned. So uh, in Krasnoyarsk, uh, region 10 times as much territory was ablaze on the 27th of April compared with last year, Zinichov said. In Transbaikal, three times as much land as hit, amounting to 200,000 hectares. In the Amora region, the number of outbreaks increased by one and a half times. Uh, Zinichov talked about abnormally hot weather and strong winds, which seriously complicated the threat. But he called for tougher punishment for those starting fires which got out of control and caused significant damage or even death. So that's what it looked like uh, in May or April, May last year. So these days uh, I refrain from uh, reporting on or even looking at kind of fairly you know, mainstream articles. Um, that are telling us how bad things are, but only up to a certain point. So we get all the experts, I see it just about every day on Twitter, uh, showing their graphs and the graphs are all meant to tell us or show us that things are bad, but they're not quite as bad as, uh, as what we might think. Uh, and that takes me back to uh, the old adage, lies, 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 and statistics. So I try to just to concentrate on what I'm seeing with my own eyes from the satellites. Uh, and then um, stories like this one, which came out uh, a couple of days ago from the Siberian Times. Okay, so etch this in your memory peat fires. Now, peat fires, I've been on for several years about the uh, importance of the fires in, um, in Siberia and elsewhere, uh, but hardly anyone, uh, perhaps uh, Sam Karana, uh, sort of pays very much uh, attention to it. And I've been saying, well, these are probably peat fires, and that's why they they flare up every uh, every spring and summer. But I've hardly, until now, I've hardly seen any reference to these being peat fires. So here we are. Here's the confirmation. Peat fires continue to burn at air temperature of minus 50 degrees Celsius in northeastern Yakutia. Pillars of smoke uh, filmed over the areas hit by last summer's wildfires, despite the current long spell of extremely cold weather. So 
uh, these are uh, well, it says zombie fires in northeastern Yakutia, Russia's largest and coldest inhabited region. The latest sighting of winter zombie fires was recorded on 23rd of January by the village of Saidi in the Tomponsky district of Yakutia, some 400 kilometers northeast of the Republic's capital, Yakutsk. Local man Ivan Zakharov, who filmed the fire at minus 50 degrees Celsius, told the Siberian Times, it's burning near the area hit by last summer's wildfires. This area ex suffered extremely hot and dry weather. It must be either peat on fire here, or as some hunters who notice these fires suggest, possibly young coal or lignite. So this is uh, uh, saying winter fire by the village of Saidi in the Tomponsky district of Yakutia, some 400 kilometers northeast of the uh, Republic's capital, Yakutsk. And um, then it has pictures of the summer wildfires in the same area. So I haven't done that. So a much bigger burning area was filmed higher up north from Saidi by the village of Udarnik, also badly hit by wildfires last summer. The fire is burning in the area close to the village of Udarnik. The summer fire didn't stop. The filming was made in November, but as the local tell us, several fires are still active, reported Tomponsky Vesnik newspaper that shared the video. तो बानो में सवार बो कोई नहीं बाहर किरा मुशीब थे वो प्रोस्ट जो लिया है तो ना कौन दिवं बोला रहा हूँ तो 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 बात हुआ था वो ना वो इसलिए तो वहीं गिरता है जब बाहर तो ना तुम भी नहीं Jadi hidup itu kau bukan. Mana cara sekolah hari ini umur lara kau tak? Itu konsol ini berarti kena. Oh, toh tajau kan hidup. Umur siapa lara ni? Last summer, the Republic of Yakutia, Russia's largest and coldest region, was hit by the worst some of the worst wildfires in history following the spill of extremely hot and dry weather. Wildfires were raging all around the territory with a massive blanket of smoke visible from space in the far north beside the Arctic Ocean. Some were in the areas too remote to reach, but many got dangerously close to populated areas like the Arctic town of Chersky, a gateway to Pleistocene park, an experimental scientific base aimed to show how the release of carbon can be slowed by restoring the flora to grassland as it was in the era of extinct woolly mammoth. We didn't have wildfires reaching this far north to our area for many years, said scientist Sikita Zimov, uh, director of Pleistocene Park. Last time it was this bad for 40 years ago in the 1980s. This winter is the coldest in Yakutia since 2006, with air temperatures 
going down as low as minus 59 degrees Celsius during peak days and record cold weather holding on for weeks all through December 2020 and January 2021. Last year um, we got the first mention of, of fires that went on through the whole season and they were a whole 10 times, 10 times larger than the, uh, than the year before. Uh, and now this year uh, we see that in late January and right through the winter the fires have been smouldering under the uh, under the snow and the freezing air. Um, so, what are we going to see this May? That's going to be interesting to see. Uh, in the meantime, I'll leave uh, some links to previous uh, videos that describe. The Siberian fires, but also uh, the Arctic ice, uh, just as a as a resource. So uh, enough for me. Uh, Seymour Rocks reporting from down under.